What's up guys, it's Twice here with a set 14 meta analysis for you. This is being brought to you both on my channel as well as TCG Ireland's channel. Go ahead and check them out. Uh, thank you guys again for letting me post here. It's it's really just a great opportunity to just get some more exposure for my team as well as just do more collaboration between Vanguard Tubers, the community. You know, we're trying to build it, get a little bit bigger, and I think this is a great way to do so. So thanks again. Love you guys. Got great content. And uh, yeah, thank you again. But um, Today we're just going to be looking at some of the most meta decks that we have. Um, I'm not going to go through really every clan, but I will explain right now that uh, I don't have anything from Dark Zone or Zoo listed as really meta anymore. And things like Lukey Reverse, Amon Reverse, Emperor Dragger, they were, they're good decks. I'm not going to deny that these decks for their clans are good. But in this meta we're talking about, I don't think that they're going to be that competitive. Leopold Reverse, Musketeers, Sephiroth, uh, Mega Colony obviously doesn't have anything until set 15 when it gets really broken, but uh, these decks aren't, again, just as meta as they used to be, or as, like, used as they used to be. In this new post-set 14 meta, they're kind of getting eclipsed a little bit, so let's just go through the 15 decks that I think are going, or that I've seen, rather, that are going, or that are the most competitive, or are going to be the most competitive. So first off, Royal Palomy of Ashley Reverse came out in this set, very consistent cards across Break Ride, of course. The Break Ride is a little bit disappointing, but I use Jewel Knights. I think that this card is amazing. It really did help get Jewel Knights to be a finished archetype. A full new set of triggers from set 14, more options in grade 1, grade 2 support, things like that, and a very consistent cross Break Ride that helps keep the field full, gives you advantage, and, you know, some more power cards coming in. Jewel Knights, I think, are, well, at least from what I've seen so far, and how well my deck has done, in locals, Jewel Knights seem to be a very competitive deck as of right now. And then for Gold Paladin, we've got two major decks, Gansalot Zenith, of course, who is kind of taking over the role of, like, the major Liberator deck. Uh, Alfred Garmor kind of falling out a little bit. The fact is, Gansalot Zenith is a cross-break ride, so there you go. He's got the 13k base constantly. Uh, he combos really well with his own break ride form, and his limit break does add a little bit more consistent power attacks, a little bit more pressure to the Liberators, which, personally, I felt that they were lacking a little bit, uh, but I think Gansalot Zenith makes up for that in whole, and it, it adds a different flavor to Liberators. That's that's just really what happens. Uh, then we've got Ezel, great card. I've used it before. Lots of power. Some people might say that this card isn't really meta, but from at least in my locals, I've seen it used quite a bit. People that didn't really want to spend the money maybe on Gansalot or just really wanted to update their Ezel deck, because Ezel was such a good deck in Season 2. It was very consistent, good support, and Ezel Scissors just helps bring it back. So I think the nostalgia that people might have for using their Ezel decks is going to make this card a little bit more used, just in terms of player base. But uh, he is still a very strong card. The only card that can really counter Link Joker in his unlocking. Passive plus 5 of the full field, as well as Limit Break, Counter Blast 2, Soul Blast 2, Gets 10,000 power plus 1 crit, which can be devastating. Can generate some really strong numbers. Uh, makes use of some very basic support, as well as his own specialized support. I think Ezel is a good deck. And from what I've seen, he is very in the meta. Uh, and then for Shadow Paladin, we got Revengers. Raging Form Dragon really is, for right now, their, big, their biggest card. Even in set 15, I think this is going to be, like, one of the most valued cards in the game. Purely because of his mechanic of the superior Persona Ride, you get the full benefit out of the cards that you use to pay the cost in still getting to use them for attacks. He doesn't use any Counter Blast, and he lets you get a second Twin Drive without dropping any cards from your hand. Um, overall, just an amazing card. There's a reason he was $45 when he came out. And Revengers as an archetype are still a very consistent, competitive deck that has a lot of synergy. I think that's the key word, Re Revengers, that I've... From what I've used of Revengers and what I've seen, Synergy is what Revengers, like, specialize in. And then, of course, we've got Minerva, who is, like, the most valued card from set 14. I think she got bandwagoned a little bit. Maybe, like, the hype kind of generated, you know, a lot of her interest. But it doesn't take away from the fact that she is a cross-break ride of a good break ride for Genesis. Her break ride combos really well with her, and her cost is relative, relatively cheap. Plus, she's introducing an archetype to Genesis to make them more like, more powerful and more consistent. So, a cross-break ride that can restand and introduces an archetype is, of course, going to be competitive and pretty widely used, especially by Genesis players. I mean, they got some, they got a really good deck in Minerva. But uh, looking at Dragon Empire now, uh, we'll first look at Eradicators, because Eradicators are pretty much always going to be competitive. They've just got, they've got 
too much support, too many options and good boss cards, and they've got, at least when the Fighters Collection comes out, three different break rights to choose from, all of which can be used in different kinds of decks. Um, I personally can't wait for Sweep Command to finally make a comeback when Shaper comes out, but they got Tempest Bolt Dragon, who is an amazing card. Just early game when you ride him, even if you don't get off the break ride, when there are open rearguard circles, he can really put pressure on the opponent just with the amount of power that he has. Um, a new break ride that can kind of be pretty useful in just getting, for Gauntlet Buster at least, plus 6, plus 2 crit. I think Eradicators are stronger because of set 14. Got some pretty good cards, and ultimately got a new boss card that's really strong. A lot of options, a very big archetype. They're kind of meant to be competitive. Uh, for Kagura, we've got two main decks. Dauntless Reverse, of course, who is, in my med in my local shop tournaments, he's incredible. I mean, I've never won against this deck. I can say that. I, I've come close a couple of times. I've never won against this deck. It's just... Actually, I take that back. I won once, but I didn't win a match against this deck, I should say. Um, but, I mean, a restanding Vanguard, a restanding Cross Break Ride, thanks to the Break Ride skill, who gets just more power because of his own limit break. You know, it, it's different than Minerva, because Minerva only gets plus 5 from her own limit break, but Dauntless Reverse, regardless of what you drive check, he's going to get at least plus 6 from his own limit break, and then restand, and then get more power from another twin drive. So, although the Break Ride does have a big cost, I mean, he makes use of, again, basic support with his own specialized support, and... I mean, he's just a really good card with a pretty low cost. And then we've got Novell, who is like the resident, you know, hate card of just everyone in the... Everyone who doesn't play Novell just puts Novell on like this plaque and says like, this is our most hated card or something. At least that's how people at my shop seem to feel. At least the ones that don't use Novell. Um, it's a grade four. It's designed to be like that. Uh, it's kind of a kind of a really broken card, but it's a great four, so at least it has an excuse. It's going to be competitive even until Season 4. I've seen this thing go against Legion decks and do pretty well, so just the fact, just how much he abuses game mechanics is going to be, or breaks game mechanics rather, is what makes him really strong. So there you go. Novell, still a very strong deck that Kagero is going to get to use for a long time, even until Perdition Dragons maybe. Uh, then we got Hayaki Boku, I think is going to be a very strong deck. I've seen it used, it is very powerful, consistent strong numbers, especially against decks that aren't cross break ride decks, that don't have options of having a cross ride. He can be very devastating because, I mean, 21, 21, 21 columns every turn for two locked cards, that's it. And then he's got Metamorphox, who can make it 31, 31, 31, and 31, 41, 31 on the break ride turn. The break ride combos really well with him. He gives you the two Hayaki Boku that you need for the limit break, just, the deck is very consistent, very synergetic, and just very powerful. Haki Vilk has a lot of power to him. So I think that this deck, having done well in Japan, is also going to do well in English. I've seen it do well. I think it is a good deck. Uh, then we've got for Magalonica, Tetra Drive Dragon uh, for Aqua Force, who is really strong. He's going to be, I think he's going to be used even until uh, set 15, when Males from Reverse comes out and Blue Storm finally gets their stuff, just because Tetra Drive is a restanding Vanguard. Like, restanding Vanguards are a good game mechanic to use. Like, they're good decks to have. So, any deck where you have the option of having a restanding Vanguard, especially one that combos so well with the Break Ride, is going to be competitive. Tetra Drive Dragon, for right now, makes Aqua Force. Then we've got. I'm going to include Duo Prism for Bermuda Triangle because the duos are coming out in like a week or something like that. So they really are going to be good because, again, Restanding Vanguard in Reet. And uh, the Break Ride can actually combo really well with Labrador as well. I think it can let you get off like five attacks, you know, because you can also throw down Restood units with Labrador. I mean, Odd could tell you more about that than I could, but still, very good deck. Uh, there are some cards that work with both Duo and Prism. So that alone is going to help make the the clan itself better by like molding the two archetypes. Maybe I'm speaking a little bit too much here about it, but whatever. Duo Prism is going to make Bermuda Triangle competitive again. So there you go. Uh, for Stargate, we've got D-Robos, who I think are, at least from what I've seen, they still have a lot of people that like to use them. Maybe it's just because of the playstyle of Dimension Police, but, I mean, when you've got cards like Commander Laurel, You've got an amazing break riding Dykeiser. 
two great cross rides of a card who, like Dayusha, who is really good even by himself, and cards that can really just help get consistent power and pressure against your opponent are going to make the archetype strong. I mean, Odd still uses this deck very effectively in locals. I mean, especially Great Dayusha, who can really can keep your opponent away from Limit Break with the passive crit. So, uh, with their Break Ride, their great uh, use of both old and new support, and their wide options in Dimensional Robo support, I think D-Robos are still a strong and competitive deck. At least, again, from what I've seen. Uh, for Nova Grappler, we've got two awesome, very competitive decks. Beast Deity, that has two cross break rides of the same unit, uh, that has a completed archetype with lots of great support. This is like my favorite archetype, so, I mean, I use it on, at, at like every other local, maybe. I've never not topped with this deck when I've used it, and overall it is very consistent and powerful. Again, not as many people are using it because of the other one, Blau, but Beast Deity is still a strong deck that I think can still be in the meta. Blau, though, is amazing. Amazing pressure. It just, if your opponent's at 4 damage, they feel like they're at 5 because they can't let anything hit because you get a restood Vanguard column. And because you have the option of getting the cross ride with Galaxy Ball Cougar means it adds to this deck's defense, consistency, pressure, you name it. Blau has it all. It's a very powerful deck. Pressure. That's the main, like, you know, that's the main logo that goes across their deck. It's pressure. Like, that's what Blau's doing. They're very good at doing it. Uh, Chaos Breaker is really the thing that Link Joker has right now until Glendios comes out and does Glendios things. Chaos Breaker is still a good deck. I've seen people use it. Even though Ezel does counter it, again, he's like the only one that can directly counter a Link Joker deck. So, still, you know, Chaos Breaker is a strong card. The best option that Link Joker has. Consistent locking, reducing opponent's resources, all that good stuff. Yeah. So this is an analysis of what I think the set 14 meta has come to look like. Again, I do have limited experience because I've only been to my local shop tournaments and I've only been to a couple because the set has only been up for a couple of weeks. Um, from what I've seen, this is the kind of stuff that is still in the meta or still has the potential to be in the meta. So I hope you guys do enjoy it. Uh, if anyone has any other opinions of what should be or should not be on this list, Feel free to comment or whatever because I think that there is a lot of room for discussion in this. But uh, yeah, so thank you guys again for watching. Thank you again to TCG Ireland. That's really awesome of you guys. I can't really thank you enough. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to always have a great day and keep card fighting. We will see you next time. Goodbye.